and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com, where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today we have a plant care video for Ardesia. I love this plant. It's so easy to grow. It's actually pretty uncommonly grown indoors, but it really should be grown more indoors because it's just an exceptional house plant. It's really easy to grow. It's really pretty, as you can see. It has this lovely, rich green foliage. Um, there are some varieties that the, the foliage is, is red when it's young, and then it turns to a green. It, this plant really adds life to an indoor space. Like I said, it's very easy to grow. It is a slow growing shrub, so that's what, that's what it is. And so it will grow fairly slowly, but it can get to a good size for you to make a great floor plant eventually reaching four, five, even six feet tall, but that would be for a, an older specimen. Um, this one is uh, a, a, a juvenile here, but it is a good uh, two feet tall already, um, or, or maybe a foot and a half, about a foot and a half. Um, we'd have to measure to make sure. So, but anyway, somewhere in that range. And I have had it for a couple of years and it grow, grew about a foot in that, in that couple of years. So as mentioned, not real fast growing, but, in, but not a slow, slow grower. I think I'd probably say a medium slow grower. Okay, so this plant, um, there are various uh, species of Ardesia that you'll, you'll find out there, um, including Escalinoides, which is commonly known as Marlberry. That one's native to Central and South Florida. And then there is Elliptica is another species that's native to the west coast of India, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, Indonesia, New Guinea. And then you'll find Cronata, which has serrated foliage and is native to the West Indies and neighboring areas. The, these plants will, if they're happy indoors, they will get fragrant, creamy white or pinkish flowers. And those can even turn into, in their native habitats, outdoors, those will turn into um, shiny black um, or red fruit that will feed wildlife as well as people in various areas of the, of the, of the world, um, depending on where they're from. Uh, this one was not labeled in terms of species, but I am fairly certain that this one is the um, elliptica uh, species. So they all, however, grow similarly. Uh, so the, the care will, will, no matter what type of Ardesia you get, the care will cover that. And you may very well find it labeled Ardesia without the species. So um, do know though that if it has toothed leaves, serrated tooth leaves, that is most likely the Cronata. Okay, so we talked about the where it comes from a little bit so you know how it's going to grow for you and now how to keep this plant healthy and happy in your indoor garden. So the first thing you want to consider is lighting. Ardesia thrives in medium to bright light. It can tolerate low light levels, but it may experience stunted growth. It's already so even more slower growth, fading leaves, leaf drop. Those are some signs it's not getting enough light. It does well under full spectrum lighting if you don't if you have low light levels in your home. So you can use uh, full spectrum lighting for this plant. And I would even suggest giving it a little full spectrum lighting um, during those those times of the year that are a lot um, winter winter months when there's a lot less light than when the days are shorter as well. You do want to avoid direct sun for this plant, such as close to a hot western or southern window that doesn't have any coverage, such as blinds or sheer curtains, or outdoors there's trees obstructing the window. So those that hot light there can burn the foliage. 
and also will cut down our humidity levels, which I'll talk about in a little bit as well, and that can cause browning leaf tips on this plant. So eastern windows, eastern exposure windows are ideal, and as I mentioned, full spectrum lighting as well. Okay, so watering. You want to water Ardesia enough to keep the soil moist but not wet or overly saturated. So, because this plant will succumb to root rot if it is overwatered. So, water Ardesia when the top two inches or so reads four on the moisture meter. So, the top two to three inches reads four. That means that the plant is approaching dryness, approaching the red and you, you should water at that point. Now for little small plants in smaller containers, say half the size of this plant or even less, you would want to water when the first one to two inches of soil has dried out. So you need to, it depends on how much soil you have um, in, in the pot and how big the plant is. But that gives you a, a general idea. So when the soil is starting to approach dryness, but you definitely don't want it to dry out, and once again, you definitely don't want it to overwater where it's always uh, wet, soggy soil either. Always use warm water when watering Ardesia and any of your house plants. Um, the especially the tropicals and a lot of houseplants are tropicals because they are used to warm water in their native habitat as i always talk about you are mother or father nature for your houseplants as you garden in the great indoors and then that being said you want to think about where that's why i always start these videos out with where does the plant come from because that gives you that informs you as to how you should treat the plant in your indoor garden okay so fertilizing you want to fertilize Ardesia monthly, spring through fall, with an organic fertilizer. Chemical fertilizers are way too harsh for this plant and many houseplants, and I generally don't recommend them. They can cause crispy leaf edges and brown leaf tips in Ardesia. Don't fertilize in the winter months when the plant slows down growth. Give the plant extra micronutrients and enrich the soil like it experiences in its native habitat by top dressing with worm compost every three months or so. And you can even do the worm compost in the winter months if you want to give some added micronutrients at that time by top dressing. I do have videos on top dressing, which I will link below, as well as any other videos that are applicable to this video. Okay, so as mentioned, uh, Organic fertilizers, I do have an organic fertilizer product which I'll link below as well as some other options as well. Humidity, as I mentioned a little while ago, humidity is really important for Ardesia because once again, they come from tropical regions and therefore they appreciate high humidity. The leaf tips will brown if the humidity is too low. You want to make, and they will also, they can drop leaves and just look kind of, look kind of sad, right? So you want to keep them looking happy. You want to maintain the humidity level at 45 to 55%. That's the ideal range. So you can check the humidity level with a hygrometer. I will put a link below for hygrometers and I do have videos that I will uh, link on hygrometers as well and how to use them. They will give you the relative humidity and temperature in your indoor garden. Uh, you want to test wherever you're keeping the Ardesia, so in that area to see what the humidity level is and what the temperature range is, which I'm going to cover in a sec. Okay, so uh, to, to say you, you test and your humidity is 40%, you wanna up it, you wanna ramp it up a little bit, okay? So there's various ways you can do that. I have a humidity playlist, uh, but those ways you can, you can make a humidity tray. You can mist, if you're gonna mist throughout the day basically, or at least at least a couple times a day, two, three, two, three times a day uh, to make really make a difference with misting. Another way to mist is to use a humidifier. I have a video on how to use humidifiers on your houseplants, so that's another option, especially if in your, if you're in a very low humidity um, area or your home is low humidity because of air conditioning or heating or just your climate. And it could be time of year, perhaps you some time of year, some part times of the year you have a lot lower humidity than others. So that that time, that time you're gonna to have to look at raising humidity as much as possible. And another cool thing to know about humidity is that plants will humidify each other. 
So the more plants you have, the better your humidity level will be. So grouping Ardesia with other houseplants or even with other Ardesias if you love them a lot is a great idea as well. Okay, I mentioned temperature. Once again, Ardesia being from tropical climates, they don't like to go real cold. That's not their native habitat. A good range is 65 to 80, even 85 degrees. That's a good range. And that's a, and this is all Fahrenheit. That, those are, that's a good range to give you an idea. Um, and it's a pretty wide range, right? But if you're gonna go lower than 65, you, you're gonna wanna try to find an area of the home that's, that's around 65. They can take 60 for a little while, but they're, they are gonna show the, start to show the, the signs, the strain, the strain of it. Okay, and then much higher, same sort of thing, like you're getting in the 90, 95, I mean, the, the same, the, all plants, a lot of plants, a lot of indoor plants have started to struggle with that too. So, and perhaps it's only for a short period of time and then depending on your climate and then, then it's, that's fine. But it, if it's a lot higher, then you'll have to figure out ways to cool the plant off. Um, another thing to keep in mind too with Ardesia and houseplants in general is to keep them away from drafty areas and forced air vents from air conditioning and heating, uh, which will dry out the air, causing low humidity, and also can change the temperature range and just uh, give the plant some problems. Okay, repotting Ardesia. Repot Ardesia when it has surpassed my um, rule of thumb, which is two third plant to one third pot. So when you've got three quarter plant to one, to one quarter pot, uh, plant the plant combo, I will link that um, uh, video as well, then that is going to be the time to pot up into the next pot size up. Not a lot of pot size up, the next pot size up. Right now, this plant is well proportioned. It's two thirds, one third right now, but, um, uh, and, and actually it was repotted about it was at the beginning of the repotting series. Um, so it was right now, I'm in July here in Southern California, and I believe I did it in April. So the um, beginning of April. So this one probably won't need a repotting until next spring again, but I will keep an eye on it towards the end of summer if it has a growth spurt, et cetera. So that's a good range. And this plant won't, if you, if you don't have time to repot it, this plant is going to be okay. It's not one of those plants where if you don't get it repotted quickly when it needs it, that it starts to suffer. This plant is, doesn't mind being, doesn't mind being a little tight in its pot for a little while. Okay, pruning. This plant doesn't need much pruning, but to keep it bushy if you want, if you start to get a really long stem, and you can see this one has several stems, they will create several stems. So they, they tend to make them themselves bushy naturally, but say you start, you, one of the stems is getting a little tall, you can cut it off right above um, a, a, a stem node, but be careful about pruning um, the main stem. Uh, you need to know what you're doing. I do have videos on where to prune plants, well, I, which I will link below as well, and I'm always adding to my pruning playlist too. Okay. So, but in the, in general, this plant kind of takes care of itself. So uh, in terms of the, if need, it doesn't need a lot of constant pinching and pruning like some plants do. Okay, pests and diseases. So root rot, as I already mentioned, can occur if you overwater this plant. So just be careful with your watering, make sure you don't overwater. Scale in terms of pests can also be a problem. Um, and I do have various videos on scale. Uh, you can prevent the scale with neem oil. You can, uh, you can uh, the, 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 before it becomes a problem, but once it is a problem, a better solution is to treat with isopropyl alcohol, the 91%, and spray it on the leaves and then wipe it off and I am soon doing a video on that procedure, which I can, I can link as well. And then also just consider that the, it, when you grow your Ardesia properly, it's going to be less likely to get sickly, to get, to get pests, diseases, like, et cetera. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Um, and keeping in the correct lighting and watering especially. 
So there you go for this beautiful plant Ardesia. I would definitely suggest adding this plant to your indoor garden. It's so easy to grow. It's so pretty. It makes it's a nice indoor tree eventually. Uh, and there's not a lot of plants that look like a tree. <laughs> Um, Ficus benjamina is one of them, but there's not that many that look like a tree if you're trying to get like a forest effect in your indoor garden. So this one would definitely be a good one to add. Origi uh, starting out originally as a shrub-like looking plant and then eventually a tree for you as well. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell if you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.